Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. I'm Jim Muscoff here. Hope you guys are doing well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube and hit subscribe to the channel as well. If you're listening on our audio platform, thank you. As always, please remember to leave a rating and review. I'm going to bring you a really quick episode today on the future of St. James's Park. Will Newcastle United stay or will they go? Hopefully, you guys have already watched or listened to our hour-length episode with John Gibson, where me and John discussed that very topic. It was one uh, filled with emotion and a bit of common sense as well, we like to think. We discussed the potential new sites for a stadium should Newcastle decide to leave, and we also discussed the troubles and obstacles Newcastle might face should they decide to stay at St. James's Park. If you haven't heard it, if you haven't listened to it, go back on your relevant platforms and do take a moment to catch up and leave us some comments as well. Thank you to everyone who has interacted on that episode. It is a topic that has already split the fan base. It is a topic that will continue to divide the fan base. We now know Newcastle United are aiming for the start of 2025 to de deliver some sort of conclusion to what they will do as they have entered a second phase now of this feasibility study as they consider all options. When you talk about the future of St. James's Park, from a fan point of view, I think many people do get lost and understandably lost when it comes to the emotion and emotional attachment to the cathedral on the hill. And there is something special about it. I walk past it on my way to work every single day and it does fill you with a bit of warmth when I uh, when I when I walk past it. It's such a beautiful sight, such a beautiful uh, building. But if I'm thinking with my head, I do understand your cast and I need to grow the revenue as quick as possible and buy as much as possible if they're going to be able to sign the very best players to help them become one of the very best teams, not just in the Premier League, but in the world. And that's the balance Newcastle United have got to get. It is one of not forgetting about your history and tradition and not forgetting about the power that St. James Park gives to Newcastle United, the advantage it gives to Eddie Howe when he's playing squad on a match day, but also understanding that if you're going to progress as a playing squad, you need that revenue and it's absolutely crucial you know there's various examples of it going right various examples of it going wrong you would say the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is an example of it going right in terms of what a wonderful stadium it is and the revenue that has come with it you would argue the West Ham move to the Olympic Stadium is one that has gone wrong because you're so far back from the pitch you've got the athletics track around it it hasn't got that atmosphere and what certainly didn't in the early years certainly didn't have what Upton Park had and um, it's come on a little bit now so look whoever's making these decisions I don't envy them at all but I come to you today because in the last few days and you may have seen this on our website one of our uh, news reporters Daniel Holland sat down with Newcastle City Council leader Karen Gilgo and asked her about the future of St James Park and what she would like to see now Karen has just recently taken over as the leader of the City Council. She's a season ticket holder at Newcastle United. So she's in a bit of a unique position because I don't think anyone can underestimate the role the council will have in the future of Newcastle United's home. Currently, Newcastle United lease the ground off the council. I'm not sure when that lease is up for negotiation, but it's understood that it has come into Newcastle's way of thinking. And the question being asked by some is why would we spend close to a billion pounds on redeveloping the stadium if we've then got to renegotiate the lease in 60, 70 years' time. you know. And also, you've got to think as well, where most clubs, when they move from an old stadium into a new stadium, they've got a little bit of cash behind them to help that move by selling their old ground. Newcastle United don't own the ground, so they can't sell it to raise funds, which is another annoyance when it comes to this whole situation. But the council are going to have a massive role to play in this whether they say it's in james park do they give permission to rebuild to extend or whether newcastle united targets somewhere else in the city center again the council will have a role in in passing any uh planning permissions that newcastle united are seeking you know and also you know if you're going to move to leases park if you're going to move to castle leaders if you're going to move to the town moor you know the council own that land so again they have a massive role to play in this. Now, Karen Gilgo was asked about the future of St. James's Park and what she would like to see. And she said to Daniel Holland, to the Chronicle, that she wants the Magpies to have a state-of-the-art stadium in the city centre and highlighted 
the central location's importance to Geordie football culture and to the local economy. Now, Councillor Gilgo confirmed that she'd held no talks with the Newcastle hierarchy about the stadium decision yet, which is quite interesting considering we are two, three months away from a decision or something towards decision being made, potential sites being explored, of which three of the potential sites that are potentially being talked about are owned by the council. So you would think maybe some sort of conversation has happened, but maybe it hasn't happened on the record. Now, she said, as a fan, because she is a season ticket holder, as a fan, I would love to have a state-of-the-art stadium in the city centre. It's a cliché but it's the cathedral on the hill. There was nothing like that walk to St. James's Park on match day. My personal preference as a fan would be for the stadium to remain in the city centre. Apart from the atmosphere and the history and all those personal stories that every fan has about going to St. James's Park, it is really important for the economy of the city. It is huge. Match day sales in the city are enormous and there's something about the vibrancy of the city centre on match days that I would hate to see us lose. There we go. That is the viewpoint of the leader of the city council. Now, she's very keen to make it clear that she's speaking as a fan, but I think that gives you a good insight into where the council would be heading to. Reading between the lines, and this is just my opinion on what was said there in that interview, the council are going to be very open to making sure Newcastle United get what they want because the importance of Newcastle United staying in the city centre is huge. The economy, the, the money it brings into the economy is massive. You don't want Newcastle United going out of the city centre and the impact that would have on the bars around the stadium on match day would just be, you know, you would see pubs and bars close. You know, match days are a huge, huge source of income for these pubs and restaurants and you don't want to see Newcastle United moving out of the city centre. So you get the feeling that the City Council will do what they can. They're not going to bend over backwards because Newcastle United aren't their only stakeholders. You know, you know, everyone is a massive football fan. They're not just going to say yes to moving Leeser's Terrace. They're not just going to say yes to here have Leeser's Park because you know people who aren't Newcastle fans will have strong thoughts about that. You know, they will some people will want to see Leeser's Park protected and won't want to see Newcastle United just given the keys. You know, but it does feel like there is an avenue there to work with the council getting to a finish point with the stadium that everyone can be happy with, which is which is good news because you want that open dialogue there when Newcastle United need to pick up the phone later on in this feasibility study. So really interesting quotes there from Karen Gilgo. Good interview there with uh, Daniel Holland from our news desk here at the Chronicle. I'll put the story link in the comment if you want to have a, a little bit uh, more of a look. And the other big news that came out over the last few days is that uh, Atletico, Atletico Madrid have struck up a, a deal that will see their stadium uh, named in the naming of a, a Saudi company, which is really, really interesting because this Saudi company is actually owned by the Public Investment Fund, which, of course, is the majority owner of Newcastle United. And it's a big, big deal. It's worth potentially $300 million over the next nine years. Riyadh Air have agreed a deal to rename the Metropolitano Stadium in Madrid as the Riyadh Air Metropolitano. Massive deal. Now, Riyadh Air were already on the front of Atletico Madrid's shirt. They were their front-of-shirt sponsor. Uh, roughly bringing in, I think, um, you know, 30 to 40 million pounds a season for that. Now they've agreed to have the name and rights to the stadium, like I said, for the next nine seasons. It is a big, big deal. And why is it important or why does it intrigue Newcastle United fans? Well, A, because the public investment fund own Riyadh Air. B, because of the timing of it. If you've not seen what Man City in the Premier League have been doing this week, going at each other's throats, and they've been living under a rock. But Man City claim they've had a legal battle victory over the Premier League when it comes to um, associated party transaction rules, which effectively means, in their eyes, deals can be made between companies that are linked to club owners and them deals can be passed through um, for maybe inflated prices. That's 
on one hand, is good news for Newcastle United, whether these associated party transaction rules will actually change massively and allow Newcastle United to go out and start doing all these deals with public investment fund companies is another matter. But what this deal with Atletico Madrid does do, it puts into the open the prices that companies are paying for these sort of deals. Because the one thing that really intrigued me about this whole Man City Premier League legal battle, look, I'm not going to get into trying to actually understand who won what. Man City claim one thing, the Premier League claim, or claim, claim something else. It's a bit of a mess. We all want clarity. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to um, understand fully what has gone on because it depends which viewpoint you take. You know, so many Cast Night fans really celebrating Man City's claims. Others being a little bit more realistic and more cautious um, with, with the whole thing. But what it what this deal, I think, does do, it answers the question of what is fair market value because, for me, that was always the important thing because if you look at the associated party transaction rules, there was nothing stopping Newcastle agreeing a deal with a Saudi company, a public investment fund company, before this legal battle went through the court. I think what the main obstacle was, was how does the Premier League determine what is fair market value? That was the key problem. That was probably the key sticking point. You don't want to go through months of negotiation, strike a deal for what you may think is fair, and there's no inflation whatsoever on the price, but for the Premier League to turn around and go, now nah, we don't think that's a fair market value. You've got to bring that price down and for it to take months and months and months for them to come to a verdict, which was one of City's arguments that it was taking far too long and they lost out on two key deals because of the time it was taken. With this deal with Atletico Madrid, 300 million over the next nine years is what, about 70, is it about 70 million? Something like that um, uh, uh, annually. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Um, that calculation is a little bit actually, but yeah, it's roughly about 300 million over the nine years. Um it, it, it kind of presents what fair market value is. If that's the, if that's what Atletico Madrid are bringing in, and that's maybe what Newcastle United, at the very least, can charge PAF companies to rename St James Park or to be on the front. Now, to put it into perspective, seller are paying twenty five million per year to be Newcastle United's front of shirt sponsor. Atletico Madrid are paying or getting paid forty million by Riyadh Air. So, fifty million pound more is their scope once the seller deal ends to get even more money for the front of shirt, the front of shirt sponsor. And then, of course, we talk about renaming rights. I mean, how much would you want your cast night to charge to rename St James's Park? I mean, given what's happening with the stadium, that's probably a little bit way, a little bit further down the road because you're not going to rename a stadium and then knock it down or say we're moving. Um, in two years' time to a different stadium. So I think we won't probably see any discussion when it comes to renaming rights until a decision has been made on a stadium and probably until it's been built. It will probably, in my opinion, open with a company's name above the door. And of course, Newcastle fans will be consulted about that, as they should be. Dalvin Neal said back in 2022 that any decision on renaming a stadium will be done with consultation with fans because of the history and tradition that goes with it. They're not just going to go and sign a deal. You know, they want to make sure fans are happy with it, which is the right approach. We've been here before with Mike Ashley. We all woke up one day. St. James's Park was being uh, pulled from the walls outside the Milburn entrance um, and renamed the sports director. Rena Wonga came in and changed it back to St. James's Park a few months later. But consultation is absolutely key. I'm not too sure it's happened here with the Atletico Madrid deal, um, but, you know, every club has their own way of doing things. But let me know in the comments, would you be happy renaming St. James's Park or a, a new stadium that they may play at in the next few years? Would you be happy with that if it brought in, you know, 70 million odd pounds a year? Because it would certainly make the PSR headache a little less painful. And that is a, that is a good chunk of money to bring in to help with the accounts. And I can see why Atletico Madrid have done it. And, you know, Atletico Madrid are a big, prestigious club as well. Um, so they've signed a big deal there and their fans probably will have a few grumbles um, underneath the surface, but they will understand the money that it brings in is really key to growing a club. And I think that's what Newcastle United are, will be looking at here. Um, we've not heard anything about it. It's just my opinion, but I think definitely in the years to come, there will be discussions over renaming wherever Newcastle United call home. Let me know 
what you think about that. Interesting about Riyadh Air, they've not even had their first flight yet. Created, uh, I think it was last year, their first flight is scheduled for 2025. Um, so they haven't even had a plane take off the ground. And yet, they're the shirt sponsor. And now the stadium uh, rights to one of the biggest clubs in world football. Amazing uh, start to a, to a company which hasn't even had a first flight yet. Really interesting. Uh, but one to think about, given the public investment funds portfolio, I just think it's really interesting to see those numbers because it might just give Newcastle United you know, a starting point when it comes to negotiating these deals. You know, is now the time to be doing it quickly while there's a bit of chaos over these rules? City claim that all the rules when it comes to these associated party transactions are invalid and have been. And, you know, right now they don't they don't matter. So is it now time to strike for Newcastle United? Get these deals in and go to the Premier League. Come on and let's see just how strong your hand is. Have you got the stomach to turn us down when we bring you these deals to the table? I don't know. It's one to think about. I'm sure the commercial dealer are looking in every single avenue right now and, and just seeing if there's something they can exploit as the civil war between City and the Premier League rages on. But there we go. Let us know what you think in the comments about the comments from the City leader. She seems very keen to have St. James's Park remain as the home of Newcastle United. Let us know in the comments about stadium naming rights. Would you accept it? It is a topic that would definitely definitely uh, create a little bit of debate alongside the stadium debate whether Newcastle United stay or whether they go. I've been Andrew Muscovo. I hope you've enjoyed this mini little show and I'll see you guys very soon.